Hi, I'm Simon Begg and welcome back to Dremel's Mission to Make. Uh, today on part three, we'll be carving the bowl that we turned last time. So the plan is to do the footprints and the sand texture on the rim of this bowl. To get started, I'll need to mark it out uh, to get the waves that I'm after. And then using the Dremel stylo, I'll start the carving. To mark this out, I'm going to start by doing a grid. So I'll just have some rough lines just running across here. They don't need to be exactly parallel because that'd be a bit boring. Uh, but I'm kind of doing my spacing about 10 to 15 mil apart. And now on my lines going the other way, I'll actually put them at like probably about a 10 to 15 degree angle. With the same logic that they don't need to be perfectly parallel. And then these ones I'll space from probably like 15 mil to about 25 mil. And so that's got a rough grid for me to work with. Now I'm just going to run a couple of coves, kind of going from point to point. Now I've got my rough lines for where I've got the curves in the sand to be, and it does look a bit like a spider's web. For me, the most important thing about carving is making sure you're comfortable. I sit in a low camping chair, and I really like that because I can kind of sit back a bit reclined, my feet are flat on the ground, my legs are slightly inclined, and that means I can work on the piece perpendicular to my eyesight. The other thing I do for comfort is to make sure the cable is on the right-hand side of my body. As a right-hander, that means that's gonna stay off to the side and out of my way the entire time. Working in my lap has the advantages of me being able to turn the bowl and work in it for the most comfortable position. If I was working standing up against a bench, then I'm kind of limited and I'm always working down, hunched over. This way, I feel like I'm in my most comfortable position. Today, I'll be working with the Dremel Stylo. Like I mentioned in the first video, it's a nice, light, compact device and quite comfortable to hold. When loading the bit, I just thread it into the collet, uh, which can be changed out. Uh, at the moment, I've got a three mil uh, collet in there and that suits most Dremel cutters. It's then got the locking button on at the underneath. I just need to press that and I can tighten it with my fingers. I find that to be adequate tightness, but if you do need to tighten it a bit more, there is a spanner in the kit. Then got the power button on the top and control down here for speed, where it ranges from 5,000 to 22,000 RPM. Most of the time for timber carving though, I am running it between the four and five setting, which are the two highest numbers. To start carving this, I'll use the five mil ball cutter, and I'm actually just gonna follow these lines and carve out my depth. When I'm carving, I pull in the direction of myself uh, if I go the other way, that's the same direction as the cutter's spinning and it'll run, it'll run with the cutter. So this way I'm pulling it towards myself and I have a lot more control. And I take lots of small light cuts and that way I'm not digging in, getting varying depths. I get a lot more control and consistency. When I can, I'll anchor my hand onto the piece. And so using that palm there, I can hold my hand in one spot and that also helps with the consistency. If I don't have the ability to work there, I'll plant my hand onto my body, into my leg. And I'll also push the bowl into there as well. So I've got a nice firm surface to work off. I also find I try to keep my hand as low as possible. Just the nature of the cutter, it works best right on the edges rather than the end. So if I'm coming in upright, it's got a smaller cutting edge, but if I come in from the side, it's got a larger cutting edge, just by the depth of the flutes. That's now step one, where I've now shaped out the first curves. So now I need to start bringing that back on an angle and that's where the cone shaped one with the radius on the end that'll match that works perfectly. So starting from the bottom here, I'm just bringing that taper up to the top. After I've done most of the roughing out, I'll go over the top and just pass over, hit any high points.
I'm actually moving my hand back and forth pretty quick, so that way it just knocks off those high bits. But because of the angle of approach, sometimes you don't always get that running quite as you'd like just because of the nature of where the handpiece is. So that's where I like to swap out the cutter for probably one that I call the lemon squeezer, so the 144. So this is a pretty shallow curve in comparison to a lot of the others. So that can just put a little bit of a recess in there sometimes if you need. Um, I don't want to go in too far to put that curve in, but I do just want to knock off the high points that are the one might have left. So I'm always just picking it up, looking around, just making sure I don't have any high points or, or scallops in areas that I don't like. It's always good to keep the piece moving. So that's looking pretty good. It does look rough, um, but to me, that is perfectly fine because that'll all come off in the sanding. Now the rough carving is done on the bowl, it's time to start sanding. So what I've actually got on the Dremel is a little mandrel. So what I'm going to do is this little disc with sandpaper on it is actually attached to double-sided tape and I've cut them out. And so now I can stick that on there and I've got a nice little sanding disc. So I just need to peel the backing off and then center this. And as long as it's close enough, it works well. So now I've got a nice small sanding pad ready to get going on this. So when I'm working, I want to actually come from a fairly upright position because that way I'm not bending the edges over and I get a nice flat surface as I go. So to get the support, because I can't actually lean my hand into something, I'm actually going to tuck my elbow into my body and come from quite upright. And that way I've just got to slowly move my arm back and forth, but I'm actually moving my entire body and that gives me a lot more control. Let's see how we go. Now that the sanding's all done, I'm going to go back to that 5mm burr and uh, re-put in that kind of curve so I've got a nice consistent shape. Sometimes with the sanding you can push the edges a bit, so I just want to get a good form back into the edges there. Now I've got crisp, well-designed edges again. I can go back to the next phase of sanding, which is going from the 120 grit down to the 240 grit. And that should clean that up nicely, uh, ready for the carving of the footprints. And after I've gone over the main flat, what I start to do is roll over the edges, just to smooth that off. So I'll start up high and then just drop down back and forth, just to give it a slight radius. And now I've done all the sanding for that, so it's ready to start carving the footprints. When I'm carving, I do like to have a scrap bit of wood like this. Uh, so if I do have any designs, I can always play around with it. Uh, on here, I've got different star designs. I've got my barbed wire on the edge, grape designs, the feet, bird footprints, scales, all sorts of things. So it's always nice to have the different cutters around so you can play around with different ideas. But back to the feet, I think I like that size. So that's 16 mil total length. So now I need to mark that on here to mark out every little foot. But before I do that, I'm going to figure out the path that I want it to take. So normally I start from around here and roughly get it going 
a bit around the bowl, and then off the top. I think I'll do another set of footprints, maybe coming back the other way, but a bit shorter of a line. I think that works pretty well. So now I'll do a mark 16 mil along, 32, 48, and I'll stop doing math, so I'll start with 16 again. 16, 32, 16, 32, I think I like that one there. Then you skip a section and go the other side. So now I've marked out where I want all my feet to be. Then on this, I'm pretty sure if that's 16, I want to go 12 mil up from the heel. So I'll start doing another mark. Now I could freehand this, but the reason why I like to mark it out is I want to make sure all the feet are the same size. It'll look really strange if I had a size 10 foot next to a size 6 foot. So a dot for the heel. And a dash for the top of the foot. Now I just need to lightly join the heel to the ball of the foot. So on this one I want to work with that pivot of a radius and put a slight curve on it that way. And then for the next one I'll turn it around. If you need to go back over the heel, you can just in that bit more. Guys, I'm going to change to the 3mm cutter to do the big toe, and then the 2.4mm cutter to do all the other four toes. Alright, the big toes. Slightly extend them. And you can just see how quick it is to change the cutters over. Which is something that I really like about this tool. Back to the other four toes. So start with the, the pinky toe on the outside and then just dot your way in. And these dots are all really close together. There we have it, that's the feet. So now I just want to pass over that one more time with the 240 grit. And that'll just take away the pencil marks and clean up the little bits of fluff that this left. Now that carving's done, I've still got a bit of a sharp edge uh, from where I've carved it and from the edge from where I turned it. So I'll just go over with the 400 grit just to take that slight edge off. And there you have it, the footprints in the sand bowl. Hopefully you've learned something from this demonstration series and if you do have any other questions, tune in for part four uh, where I'll be able to answer all the questions that you have. Cheers.